Welcome to Hidden Gems. My name is Arden Thomas. I'm the Syncom Small Talk Product Manager. Hidden Gems is where we show you capabilities of the product that you may or may not be aware of, but we want you to know about. We think they're valuable capabilities, and we want you to be able to use them. Today, we're going to be talking more about custom views. One of the most powerful capabilities of Syncom Smalltalk is the ability to build and use custom views that that draw and behave exactly how you want them to. So we're going to continue with the example that we've been using with, with stock charting. And, and, and that's largely just so we can have a, a comprehensive application that we're demonstrating lots of techniques you, but you can use those techniques in in almost anything, in almost any context. So let's get started. The first thing we'll show you, remember this is our, our stock chart, and we can look at any of these. And remember, we're able to scroll like this. Notice we have one problem. We just we didn't follow through with some refinements that we're going to do right now. And you can see kind of points gathered up here on the left hand side, and it doesn't really adjust the Y range for what we're displaying here. So we're going to fix that first off. So let's take a look at some code that draws this. So we get our display points. It's fairly simple. We get a polyline and we display them stroked on, and then we come back and for each of those points, we draw the, the dot that you see on the line for the actual point, and they're all connected in between. So how can we fix or improve this? Well, we have all the points each time, so a very quick way to, to fix that, which I've already got set up here, is to simply get the subseries of what we're showing. And if I look at let's see control E will show me subseries. We'll get the series for the range, the date range that we're displaying. So instead of presenting this with the whole series and just displaying what's in view, we'll only now look at that already. You see those things to the left are gone. And more importantly, as I scroll in, it just it adjusts the Y range, so we're not we're not seeing a, a lot of a lot of white space for what we're displaying. So that is one one simple improvement that that made a pretty big difference, I think. But the next one I think is what you're going to really enjoy. The next one is some refinements on our custom view. Now, if you're familiar with model view controller and how exactly that works, you'll be right at home. One of the things that a lot of architectures that use model view controller have evolved to over time is combining the view and controller. And it's done that here as well. So let's go to event driven. This is the chart graph view still. And one of the things that we need to answer behaving like a controller is give me a handler for, for this mouse event. And what I'm going to say first is, is this a motion event? Like it is a, is it a mouse moved event? If it's not return nil, and then there's different types of motion events. And I want to check to see if it's a mouse moved event. If it's not, bail out. Otherwise, I'm going to handle this. Now, once you've done handler for mouse event, you can use handle event. Now, my handle event, uh, first, let me explain what I want to do. I want to go to a point in this, and I want to see the exact value. What is the price at this exact point? So if I close in on this, uh, it shows me the exact value of that point. So that's what I wanted to do. 
And this is a nice interactive display for doing that. Well, well, let's see exactly how I did that. Okay, I'm handling an event. I get my view origin, my, so that's right up here. My view origin, the top left, my view, top left, self-bounding frame origin. Then I get the mouse point, which is the event within the window. Well, I don't want it within the window. I want it within my view. So I calculate that. So my viewpoint is the mouse point minus the view origin. Then I'm going to get my display points that we see each, each, um, each circle here shown. Those are my display points. Then this is a threshold. I'm going to say if, if the mouse cursor is within 3.3, three, and I started with a larger value, but I, I narrowed it down to 3.3. Three. With, when it's within that, I find the point. I detect point minus the viewpoint, absolute value. If that's less than this threshold, we return that near point. Now look also here. I have, I show right down here, if I'm within that, I, I show where the point is. And you'll usually put something like this in there for, for development to see how this is working and if the values are what you expect. So, some, some details here. Near point, if it's not nil, I have a, a display window instance variable in my, my chart graph view. And if display window is nil, I'm going to create a display window. So I'm going to tell the event initiator that I'm going to grab the mouse event until I let it go. I, I'm going to continue to grab that. And that's without some of this, what you'll get is flashing every time you go near that. So you're flashing and you're showing and there's kind of kludgy ways you can you can display it for a few seconds, but then it goes away and your events stack up. And th this is a better way. And you just have to understand what it's doing. So we're going to grab the mouse event. We're going to find the index of near point. We're going to get the information, the daily datum from that point, the daily datum close, that's the value. This is the value that we display. Daily datum close, so when I go right here, 138.95, that's coming from here. Close print string as text, all bold as composed text, that's my label. Then I create a transient window, and I tell it where to display, and the component is gonna be this label with the value, and then I map it, which displays it. Okay, well, how do I close that then? I'm, I'm not doing it right here. Well, if I did it right here, it would, it would show and display. You actually wouldn't even see it. So the next time I come in, if the near point is, is if it's not nil, my display window is not nil, I do nothing. So it continues to display it. However, if my near point is nil, I've got to unwind this. So I cancel the event. I ungrab, which tells me I'm not going to continue to grab mouse events. And then if the display window, if it exists, I, I have to check that because if I'm in here for the first time and there is no display window, it would there would be nothing and I couldn't close it. But if it's not nil, I close it and I set it to nil. And that is basically it. Those are, this is kind of a sophisticated technique that you can use again in lots of contexts to do this type of interactive behavior. Let's zoom in so we can see we, we zoom in to, we change our Y, our Y aspect, and we can see exactly what the price is at any point. And for any of our stocks, let's check out. Okay, here it is. And again, that is using this technique, this model view controller technique, where the controller behavior is now bundled in to the view. And we're handling these events. Again, we say, do we want, who, who's going to handle this event? We'll say, we'll take it if it meets our criteria. And then we handle it. We grab 
we grab the events and we display it window until we figure out that we're done. Then we unwind that and close it up. And this works just great. This is a great technique for your, your toolbox of custom view capabilities. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any comments, feedback, questions, please send them to Arden Thomas, a Thomas at syncom.com. Until next time, have a great time with Smalltalk. Thank you. Mm -hmm.